what are going to be going over here are stock splits versus stock dividends. This is where you're increasing the number of common shares outstanding here. And we're going to make the comparison between uh, stock splits and stock dividends. And for our example here, Corp A is going to have these equity accounts. They're going to have common stock, 120,000 shares outstanding at a $5 per share par value for a total of here of 600,000. And then they're going to have some additional paid in capital here to common stock at 950,000. And then sitting in retained earnings, they have 2 million here. So total shareholders equity is 3,550,000. And we're going to use this these numbers here for both the stock dividends and the stock splits. And currently their common stock per share market price here is sitting at $100 per share here. And the board of directors says that's a little high. We want to get that market price down so we can distribute our shares uh, to the um, to the public here at a cheaper price. So they're going to do a stock dividend or a stock split here to increase the number of shares and ultimately it would uh, reduce the market price here uh, the per share here on their common stock. There may be many other reasons, but just go under that premise here. Okay, so this is what we're going to look at here. Two cases, A and B here. So for our uh, we're going to have a 50% stock dividend that's declared here, and that's considered a large stock dividend. So what we're looking at here is 120,000 shares outstanding here, 50% dividend here. So that's going to equal 60,000 additional shares here that are going to be issued to the current stockholders here as a dividend. Now, we've got another thing here. We're going to have a three for two stock split, and this is going to be to accomplish the same thing here. It's going to increase the number of shares that are outstanding here, and it's going to be distributed to the shareholder. Same as our stock dividend. So looking at our three for two stock split, this is where every shareholder with two shares here is going to get one additional share here on this stock split. So that's going to also be for 60,000 60, additional shares are going to be issued here. So for our comparison purposes, we're issuing 60,000 additional shares here for both our stock split here and our stock dividend. So let's first go look at this large stock dividend. In, and that acts as a stock split. It's going to, they're both going to accomplish the same thing by increasing the number of shares that are outstanding. But what we're going to be concentrating on here is how we handle these on our equity accounts or between our retained earnings or, and our common stock. What the difference is between a stock split and a stock dividend. So let's first look at our uh, stock dividend. And this is where we're going to be transferring from our retained earnings the par value of those shares that are issued here. And there's going to be no increase in additional paid in capital here. That's based on the fact that it's a large stock dividend. We're not going to be looking at a small stock dividend. That's a bit different here. But for our purposes here for increasing the number of shares, we're looking at this large stock dividend. So, and that's for our large stock dividend, that's where the stock dividends are greater than 20 or 25 percent of the common stock outstanding here. So, in this case, we have a 50% stock dividend. That's greater than our 20 to 25%, and that equals 60,000 shares that are going to be distributed here. So here's where we're going to... Corp A is going to issue its own stock to its shareholders here. This is the common stock. They're going to issue it. Now, the shareholders are going to pay zero for it. This is just going to be a dividend that they receive here. And it does not affect any assets or liabilities on the balance sheet. All we do is we deal with our shareholders' equity here between our rate return earnings and our common stock. So starting with our example here. So in this case, with this large stock dividend, we're going to be transferring from retained earnings here, the earned capital account into the paid in capital account here, a common stock. So let's look at what's going on here. So what we're going to do in this case here, where we have this 50% dividend, we're going to reduce our retained earnings here by 300,000 and it's a uh, debit it here and a credit is going to be increase our common stock by that same amount here for 300,000. And in this example with the large stock dividend nothing flows into additional paid in capital here. It just becomes a zero amount here when you're dealing with the large stock dividend. So looking at our 300,000 here so we had 120,000 shares here to 50% dividend times the $5 par value per share. This is the key here we're using the par value per share here when we're making this distribution here from retained earnings to uh, the uh, equity common stock account here. So that equates here to 300,000. Okay, so let's just go and look at this common stock account here. Again, doesn't affect any assets or liability. It's just simply a transfer from our retained earnings here, earned capital into the contributed capital here. Now, what we want to focus on here, the pay par per share val 
amount amount here does not decrease here when we're talking about this large stock dividend. Now, when we look at our stock split, we're going to have a decrease here in our par per share value here. But in case of this large stock, and when we call it a stock dividend, par value per share stays the same. So what we've done, we've got 120,000 here in our common stock shares here at $5 par. We're going to issue 60,000 additional shares here at the $5 par amount here. So we're going to increase our common stock here from, from 120 to uh, it's going to be 180,000. So let's look at that. The key point is here we're going to increase the outstanding shares here in this stock dividend. And that's what the uh, company's trying to do or this board of directors trying to do. They're trying to increase the number of shares that are outstanding. So we got 120,000 plus the 60,000 here. That's going to give us a total of 180,000 here that are outstanding. And that again, remember, is a 50% stock dividend here. Um, the number of shares that were increasing here is 120,000 by that 50% dividend here for 60,000. Okay, now going back to, well, we've taken care of our common stock account here, and we're just removing, uh, transferring retained earnings here at the par amount based on the dividend or percent of dividends here, that uh, dividend here that's being paid, uh, declared here in our common, our common stock of 50%, transferring it over here into common stock. Now with the large stock dividend here, the additional paid in capital is not, there's no effect here. It's just, there's no going to be no increases here. So there's no increase in additional paid in capital, only the common stock par amount here is increased. Market price doesn't become a factor here when you're dealing with these large stock dividends or these stock splits here. If we were dealing with the small stock dividend, then we would be dealing with the market price here. But we're not getting into that here with this large stock dividend. The other thing we want to note here is the shareholders, um, the shareholders equity does not change. It's only reclassified here. Same amount here. Well, let's just look at that. It's only uh, you're going to have a reduction here in retained earnings of three hundred thousand, and then you're going to have an increase in your common stock here for three thousand, uh, three hundred thousand dollars. So they just balance out again zero amount going into additional paid in capital. It's only the par value on the uh, stock dividend times uh, that's being transferred over here into common stock. So that's the key point here. Nothing flows into additional paid in capital. Retained earnings here is transferred at the par value based on the dividend rate here or the dividends that the stock dividends that it's declared into your common stock or your paid in capital account. Okay, so we've taken care of our uh, stock dividend here. Now let's go up and look at how we would take care of our stock split. Okay, so here's our stock split. Again, we had our common stock 120,000 shares outstanding before the ship uh, split here. Now we're going to have this three for two stock split. So you have to work that out here. Just use a little common sense and how you're uh, dividing those up here. But the three for two stock split will go again. That's where every shareholder with two shares is going to get an additional additional share here. So they're going to end up, they had two shares here. If they, oh, for every two shares they own, now they're going to end up with three shares. They're going to get that additional shares and that equates here to 60,000 additional shares here that are issued to the shareholders. And again, for both the stock dividends and spot stock splits, it's on a pro rata basis here. So here again, we have the three for two stock split. That's going to equal 60,000 shares. So here's the key here when we're talking about these uh, stock splits and stock dividends. Again, let's just go here. The shareholders are going to pay nothing just as we did here. There's no exchange of cash or anything like that. They just get that dividend here. The corp is going to issue its own shares of common stock to them. Okay, so again, here's the case here with the stock split. This is what we want to concentrate on. Retained earnings here, there's going to be no change. It's going to just sit here at the $2 million amount that's sitting in retained earnings, no change. There's no transfer here from retained earnings to common stock with the split here. So a common stock doesn't change either. It's just going to sit here at $600,000 um, here. That's what we had here before the stock split and after the stock split. Now, this is what does change here. Remember we had our par, uh, our pay per, sh pay, par per share 
decreases. This is the difference. With the stock dividend, we didn't have any decrease. We just used that par value. Here, we're going to have a decrease, and that's based on the stock split. And we can do our arithmetic here, but we had $5 par here. Now it's going to be reduced to $3.33 per share of the par value. And that's simply the 180,000 shares that are now going to be outstanding. That we increased here. Just as we did with the stock dividend, we had 120,000 plus the 60,000 that's being distributed here for the split in this case, we end up with 80, 180,000 here total. So just what works out here for the arithmetic here, you take the 180,000 times the $3.33 here, par amount, the reduction here, um, that 180,000 times that equals the $600,000 here that we had here before the split here and after the split. So there's no, uh, no transfer from any retained earnings to common stock. And obviously there's no change here in additional paid in capital. That again, no change here. So again, um, what we can just look at it here again. Remember the hundred eighty thousand three dollars and times three dollars and thirty three cents par here. That equals six hundred thousand. Again, no change to the uh, total amount here of par in your common stock. What did change is the par value from five dollars to three dollars and thirty three cents. And then, okay, I just look at. You just have to work your arithmetic out here when you're doing these stock splits here. We changed the par per share. That how I just figured that out. Instead of all I did is inverted my fraction. However you come up with your fractional amount, use a little common sense, um, develop that here. In this case, we had three twos. It two thirds of five dollars becomes three dollars and thirty three cents. Okay, so you've seen here again. The other thing we want to note here is note in our frame. This is the key here. When you're dealing with the stock splits we didn't have any change here from a or we didn't transfer anything from retained earnings to our common stock as we did with the stock dividend all we did is change the par value per share here and we again we increased the number of shares the same amount here by that 60,000 share additional shares that are being issued issued here under the stock split same as for the stock dividends so our number of shares issued uh, Increase in our shares here reduces the par value per share. And then the only thing you really want to note here is, and this is the thing that you have to note, and this is key here, you have to note in your financial statements that the par value has been reduced here to $3.33 per share here from the $5. And the shares outstanding is increased here. And I'm just, it, if you use your fractional amount here, three, two times 120,000, what was sitting there is now 180,000 shares after the split. So this is, you have to put it into your financial statements. Uh, you have to make a note here, and a reduction of your par value per share, and then the increase in the number of shares that are outstanding here. So again, just remember here, for the splits, nothing is transferred here from your uh, earned equity into your paid in capital here. So that that's all you have to do is note here the number of shares. And then one other last thing that we want to talk about here. Uh, when you're doing these stock dividends and stock splits here, it's done on a pro rata basis. We're not going to get into all the details here, but I'm just going to look at it here. As so just to make a note here, each stockholder maintains exactly the same proportionate interest in the company here after any stock dividend or stock split here. So uh, number one, the stocks issued to the stockholders is on a what they call a pro rata basis. And two here, each shareholder has the same total book value after the stock dividend and stock splits. Just briefly here, a stock issued at a pro rata basis, say for example, you own 10% interest in a company, you will receive 10% of the additional shares. And that, uh, you're gonna have the same equity ownership here after the stock dividend or the stock split as you did before. Only difference is, is and we'll go back and talk about that just a little bit here. So just remember here at our stock dividend, we were actually moving retained earnings here based on the par value of that dividend over into our common stock. And it didn't affect any additional paid in capital. The par value stayed the same here uh, based on that stock dividend. But then when we did this stock split here, we didn't make any transfer of the, um, we issued the same number of stocks uh, to our shareholders, the same number based, in this case, it was that 60,000 shares here, but we didn't 
on our balance sheet here and our equity account we didn't make any it does not we didn't make any changes here in our shareholders equity we didn't move anything over here from our retained earnings to our common stock so that's another key here that we're talking about with the stock split does not change any of the balances here in our and, and our shareholders equity whereas it did with the stock dividend so just the stock split that's the total number of shares that you have now outstanding here after the split and then you have to re reduce your par value based on the number of shares that are increasing here such that it equates to the same amount here in your that was sitting before the split here and after the split here sitting in your common stock par value account and then again no effect here on the excess over par that just stayed the same here in this case we had 950,000 here before the split here and that just stayed here and we had the in this case 600,000 here sitting in our common stock before the split and then we had 200 uh, 2 million here sitting in our retained earnings no transfers of any equities here for the split it doesn't didn't change any of the balances here in the shareholders equity whereas the stock dividend dead here so that's just a summary overview here of a difference between stock splits and stock dividends